why don't you first talk? Let's let's start off with a bang, okay? Why don't you share, share some numbers of some producers that you know for a fact are pulling home with some with some telesales, and and you you know what I'm talking about. You know where I'm leading this conversation. Are you leading to what we just learned about? Yes. Yeah. I mean, I was amazed that there's a lady we met that has put up over 50k two months in a row. Say that again for the people. Fifty thousand dollars. Fifty thousand dollars a month, two months in a row, by hand dialing leads and making sales. Unbelievable, super impressive. I mean, I mean it's public knowledge that you know they put it up on Facebook, so it's like we can share it. It's not sec- it's not a secret, but it is unbelievable. Like fifty thousand. Yes, but she's she's also calling more people. Yeah. She's working harder. She stay in the office till 10, 11 o'clock at night Eastern time so that she can talk to people 7, 8, 9 o'clock at night Pacific time. You know, like it's just, it's it's mind blowing. Well, let's unpack that a little bit more. So, you know, we got a chance to sit down with this young lady and, um, you know, what are some specific things that she's doing besides just working hard and grinding it out and she's got a good attitude? Yeah. What are some specific things that you feel that have led her to be that kind of producer? She's a relentless, high activity, and super aggressive on the phone. I mean, a, 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 no lead is ever dead. And she's extremely aggressive on the phone at getting someone to do what she wants. And, and there's just something about, you can't get, the one thing with telesales too that she's great at is most agents will get ran over. She ain't getting run over. No, no, she's driving the car. But most agents are, are not, they're in the passenger seat and they don't know how to get in the driver's seat. And yes, you want to be in the passenger seat as in the driver's talking more than you, but somebody's got to ask those questions and lead that conversation. How do you think she got, do you, okay, so do you think that's a natural talent that you're just born with and, and the particular organization that we got to work with lucked out and got her or was there something that drew that out of her? I think or, it's a combination. I mean, yes, I think there's, what's funny is I was listening to a podcast, uh, Cardone and Belford recently, and, and they like differed, you know, um, Cardone doesn't think that people are like natural born salespeople, which I disagree with. I truly believe I'm a natural born salesperson. Now, have, can you improve? Can you add skill to the equation? You know, can you learn? Can you implement? Can you plug in and, and actually like role play and do it a lot, high activity and get really great at it? But like my first, you know, first year in the business, I was doing things that most people weren't able to do because I felt like maybe I wasn't a natural born closer. I don't know that anyone's like a natural born closer per se, but I was natural in the fact that I understood I had to listen and I don't talk a lot, which is great. I understood that I had to build a relationship with people and I was really good at like warming people up and getting them to open up and share. And I still am same thing with her. And, and so I think there's a combination. I think naturally she's very gifted but also the company has a great system. And the third level to it is she's constantly improving yep. and still believes she could do more than 50K. Oh, yeah. And she, she said she, it out loud. Multiple times. It wasn't even like... And yeah, and what most people don't get is either. You're thinking, okay, that's amazing. Most agents would almost get... Compl- most people would get complacent. Oh, yeah. All I, all I know is if, if you're out there right now and you're doing 10K a month, you have not reached your full potential. If you did 10K, guess what? You can do 20. I was talking to a dude named Joey uh, from out in South Carolina. Good dude. Um, I, I, I get to coach him a little bit. And he was doing 12K a month, 10, 12K a month. And I'm like, dude, you ought to be doing at least 20. So then he shifted that mindset. And is instantly doing 20? 20K a month. That's awesome. It's kind of funny how that works, right? Yeah. And I'm like, I actually think he's a $40,000 a month producer, though. You know you know what I, I used to tell people? Anybody can go take a bow and arrow, fire it at the wall, and go up to the arrow and draw the bullseye around the arrow that's already shot and be like, look what I did. <laughs> I hit the bullseye. That's good. Why don't you create the target, aim for it, shoot it, and nail it? That takes more skill, takes more you know, attention um, to detail and, and, you know, set your target high. You know what I mean? Like some people just are like arrive at that. And they, like mm-hmm. you said, I mean, it, it's, it, it would motivate me to know 
that I'm thinking I'm a high, high level producer and there's a girl out there in Florida doing five times as me with the same amount of hours in the day. She doesn't have an opener. She's mm-hmm. hand dialing. I mean, good grief. She has no like secret sauce. You know, like I hear a lot of producers talk about their success, these high level producers. And, you know, they'll, they'll talk about like how they're, they've been successful, but there's kind of some things going on behind the scenes that have kind of like really helped them yeah. succeed. Totally. You know, like uh, we, I may have done search engine optimization for the last five years and locked into that. And you just can't really do that as a normal final yes. expense agent. You can't blog for four hours a day or whatever like this guy can, you know. But this, you know, girl, woman, um, just sat down, hand dialed and knocked it out. It's just incredibly impressive. Most people would never put that forth the amount of effort with a dialer, let alone hand dialing. Well, I'm just beyond impressed. That's really, really am. So, you know, I guess I, I just feel like, I feel like there's a, um, there's just a shift going on and, and I'm, and I'm, I'm not saying that everything's going to be telesales, but it seems like people are, one of the shifts is, is that the, 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 the market is becoming easier to do business without like being face to face. It seems like, I mean, good grief. You can set up a bank account now and you don't even, who, who's been into a bank location lately? You know what I'm saying? Like what's well, funny is, you know, I have not, but people are getting, people are getting mortgages online. Yeah. Not even talk to somebody buying That's cars insane. with an app, you know? Yeah. So, oh yeah. What, what, what is that? Uh, is it Car- Carvana? I don't know, but you can buy a car without ever talking to a salesman on an app, you know, yeah. and people are doing it. You can like go to this place and like, I don't know. And, and then it's like a, it just like, it's like a vending machine of yeah. cars. Yeah. We saw it in uh you'll probably know what I'm talking about. We saw it near Dallas in Texas. Are you serious? I didn't yeah. know. I don't even know what you're talking about. No, I, I swear. You buy it online and you go pick it up. What? No one's there. And it's like <laughs> a, it's like a 12 story vending machine of cars. And you like, I don't know. It's crazy. And it, and it comes out and you drive off. That's crazy. Well, you I mean, know, I'm sure there's a little more to it, but that's either way. It's nuts. So I also hear you get a lot of questions on, okay, how many leads a week do I need for telesales? And I really like how you break down those numbers. Um, why don't you talk through, if you don't mind, if I'm getting started in telesales, if I'm trying yeah. to transition from a field agent into telesales sales capacity, um, give me some rough numbers on amount of leads I need. Do you want to talk about the opener now if you want to? Just kind of yeah, like general structure. Yeah, I mean, structure. there's different, there's two different schools of thought. There's one where you've got an opener transferring to like two closers, for instance. Or there's another one where, and, and, and maybe the quality of lead is not as important in that capacity because the opener is pre-qualifying for health and bank account. Okay. And they're just making $250 a day. And then they're transferring 16 Eight to that guy, eight to that gal, you know, the two closers. And they're selling. That school of thought requires a little more capital. Um, it's easier and less intensive on the closers, but it requires more leads. Yeah. Okay. A little more money, a little more leads. Maybe maybe the quality isn't important because it's okay. I got to dial twelve hundred fifty people a week. You know. Where there's another school of thought where you don't need an opener. You you try to do higher, try to do better leads, higher intent leads as you would call them, and. You don't spend as much money, you don't need as many leads, and you're working them yourself. So I'm, I've have done both. I don't mind, you know, sitting there getting plugged into the closer role naturally and just getting handed leads. I did a telesales challenge probably two years ago, and that's what I did. You know, I was able to sit in my own call center and transfer me leads. I've also done the other way where I'm dialing leads myself. But you, one thing that'll get a closer burnt out in the ladder role is if you are don't have an opener and you're calling through leads is if you're cold calling or you're calling like old stuff or like a lot of garbage it can get depressing that makes sense okay so um let's just why don't you break down the opener first for me real quick so uh let's just say we want to go down the route of an opener um you say it's a little more capital intensive yeah let's walk through how many leads a week do you think you should get Um, where do you think you should get them from? And then uh, let's talk about the numbers of, okay, if you call, walk me down to the point of contract. So how many leads, how many transfers, how many closes? Yeah. I mean, the ideal situation, I mean, to go daily or weekly. Whatever. Let's look at the week. Okay. And then then I can talk through the day at the same time. So ideally, you would need about a couple hundred leads a week through digital advertising, you know, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Google, whatever. 
you would need to, if you're going to an opener, you would want them to call about $250 a day, about $1,250 a week. Out of those $250 per day, you would expect them to talk to about 48 people. So they'd be, end up talking to about 240 people for the week. Out of 48 people they talk to in conversations, you would want them to transfer about 16 of those that have some level of interest, ha- can qualify health-wise, and have a bank account. And then out of those 16, you've got eight going to one cl- closer, eight going to another. And then you look at the entire week, and it's eight per day, five days. Each closer is receiving 40 pre-qualified live transfers per week. Off of that basis, you would expect to close at least five. Okay. About one per, in eight. Per closer? Per closer. Yeah. Ten sales between the two. About one in eight worst case scenario and, and, and even a new agent. And as someone gets better, they can expect much better results. So that's around 40 apps a week or a month. Yeah, between the two. Okay. Yep. So you need you need more leads. You need a couple hundred leads a week. You need an open. You got to pay an opener south base. Okay. You, you may or may not pay the closers with base plus commission or whatever, or you're one of them or you're 100% commission, you know, whatever. But that's, you're looking at, they're down about 1,250 times a week and transferring about 200, you know, they're talking about 240 and they're transferring, you know, whatever, 16 times five is, that's, what's that, 80? So You're the numbers you guy, go. not me. It's 80. So, sounds about right. Uh, did, uh, so is that w- w- product, you think you're talking final expense or Medicare, similar results? Or are they different? Uh, that's more final expense related. It could actually be very similar. I've found with Medicare. that final expense and Medicare typically follow each other. Yeah. The, the only thing is whether you're able to sell MedSup or Advantage or, you know, if, yep. if you're targeting T65 or over 65, it's a little, I mean, final expense is a little easier from like a, I'm running this direction, you yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah. But I could see similar numbers as long as you had that many leads. You know, the, I mean, the only thing with, if you're only selling MedSup, then the pre-qualifier would be checking for... You know, make sure they get health qualify, they have an account, and they have a Medicare supplement plan. Okay. You know, so okay. you maybe may transfer less. Okay. But they may be much better. Okay. Perfect. Hey, if you love this video, stop what you're doing. Click right there. I've got another phone sales videos with tips specifically for you to convert people over the phone. Click on that video, and I'll see you there. Today, I want to talk about five easy phone sales tips that you can implement right away and see success with, okay? So stay with me as I go through each one of these, all right?